All right, hello everyone, and welcome back to Kotobo Space Program, where today we are having a look at yet another wonderful mod, this time in the form of Tayrobi, which is being made by forum user Beal, and what this glorious little parts pack looks to add into the game is currently a selection of parts for building a stock alike X1 airplane. And now that's currently. Down the road, though, it should also have other stock-alike parts for historically based aircraft, and not just any aircraft, but specifically ones that are from the sort of pre-Sputnik period of rocketry. And, well, that's just wonderful. I love that. So let's jump right into the space plan hangar so we can take a look at the parts that we currently have. And now this mod is still in its early stages. So let's get that right out of the way from the get-go. Uh, but even with it being early and only having parts for the X1, I'm already fascinated by it because of the parts for the X1, which I've always been fascinated by because it is the first manned airplane to break the sound barrier. And, well, that's just quality history right there. So, of course, let's take a look at the first part here, and that's the G1 cockpit, which, uh, of course, is a... Kerbalized stock alike version of the X1 cockpit, and even though it is quite simplistic, I I love it because it's got that nice 40 50s rocketry feel to it, which is just cool, especially with the uh oh god, I don't even know what you'd call that coming off the front. The the, the point, the point, I'm sure it has a use, but <laughs> I couldn't tell you. Oh, but yes, it's a beautiful, beautiful little cockpit. It uh, is a one-person cockpit, of course. It has a reaction wheel, SAS, and a built-in electric charge of 90. And it also serves as a very good alternative to the Mark I cockpit. Because, of course, well, it is a similar shape and size. And is, uh, of course, also a one-man space plane cockpit. And for those of you like myself who like to really role-play out your Kerbal Space Program save files, or if you're really hardcore into career mode, I, I would really prefer this one over a Mark I in the early stages of my space plane career because, well, it's the early days of our space program in rocketry. You wouldn't have nice, sleek, smooth, beautiful-looking futuristic Mark Ones. You would have this, uh pointy thing, which is beautiful. <laughs> and so, yes, that's the cockpit there. Let's jump into fuel tanks where we have the next two parts, which, oh god, they blend in with everything. Where'd they go? Oh, here they are. Excellent. So, we have the G1 rocket propellant tank A, which just slots in behind the cockpit here. Snug as a bug. Beautiful. And it has liquid fuel of 198 oxidizer of 242. And then we have the B tank, which tapers off to the tail, and it has 225 liquid fuel and 275 oxidizer. There we go, tapering off quite nicely, and it's already starting to look like an X1. Beautiful, beautiful. And the last part that we currently have in this mod is in engines, where we find the G1 engine. So let's just pop it on there. Beautiful little thing. And, well, it's a pretty nice, decent little engine has an atmospheric thrust of uh, roughly 70, a uh, vacuum thrust of 75, engine ISP of 330 atmospheric and 355 vacuum, and consumes a decent amount of fuel at 1.9 per second liquid fuel and 2.37 per second oxidizer. Overall, quite a, quite a decent little rocket engine. Nice little design to it. Not exactly the most complicated thing in the world, but remember, this is based off of an airplane built in, oh god, 1945? Flown in 48, if memory serves? Hopefully I'm right. Hold on, I actually do have the Wikipedia page up on my other monitor, just to double check myself on some of these things. Uh, yes, built during 45, flown in 48. Excellent, there we go. I'm not talking out of my butt. Beautiful. So yes, these are the four current parts of the mod pack. Now the mod maker is hoping to add in other parts for the X1, such as wings, control surfaces, wheels, all that sort of stuff, as well as other parts for other ships, including a V2 rocket, which of course Beale is also uh, the creator of the Tantares pack, and right now the V2 is in Tantares, and he's wanting to rework it a bit and bring it into this pack as well, uh, because the sort of purpose for this pack being split away from Tantares is because of its historical vibe to it. It's a his basically a historical alternative 
to uh, the or an earlier historical alternative to the Tantarius pack, which I quite like that idea of pre-Sputnik stuff being put into its own pack here. And of course, as I mentioned, I love the X1, so I'm I'm very happy to see it. Now, I created using these parts a um <laughs> a plane that somewhat mimics the X1. Of course, these all being named G1, we have named it thusly. And uh, yeah, not the most beautiful plane in the world, but again, the Bell X1 wasn't exactly the most beautiful plane in the world either. But the big reason I was interested in this wasn't just because it's the X1, which again, I'm fascinated by, but also because I wanted to see how it handles. I have not flown this plane yet, and so I'm intrigued how the parts for this mod actually compare to the real world X1. Now it is a stock-alike kerbalized version, so I'm not exactly, you know, thinking it should be a one-to-one -one ratio. It's probably not going to compare exactly with the X1, but remember, the X1 is the first manned airplane to break the speed of sound. So we at least have to break that, which of course the speed of sound is 343 meters per second. So if this plane can beat 343 meters per second, I'll be happy. I'll be even happier though, if it breaks the first record of the X1, the original X1 uh, flew at 1600 kilometers per hour. Uh, the original X1, the X1A, which was later on, oh God, that I think did 2600 kilometers an hour. Back to the Wikipedia page, hold on a moment. Yes, excellent, I'm correct. <laughs> so, <laughs> as long as we get somewhere between a max speed of 1600 kilometers per hour and 2600 kilometers per hour, I'll be a happy camper, which I'm also just now realizing as I go to press launch, speed on the planes is in meters per second. Oh God, what's 1600 kilometers per hour in uh, meters per second? Let me give, do the math here real quick. Uh, roughly 440 meters per second, and the 2600 kilometers per hour is... Oh, this is probably going to be wrong since I'm doing it in my head. 720 meters per second? So as long as we're somewhere between 440 and 720 meters per second, somewhere in there, I will be a happy camper. So let's see how this baby compares to the real X1. Now, of course, my wings are somewhat horrible. And of course, this thing is kind of heavy on the butt. <laughs> oh, there we go. Picked up quite nicely and actually taking off quite nicely. Look at that, that is just beautiful. Excellent, let's get the gears up. And I actually like the level we're at. We are gaining altitude, but not at a huge rate. Let's lower the nose just ever so slightly to bring us pretty even with the horizon. There we go, and let's just get up to speed. Now we're already cranking up there pretty quick. We should break the sound barrier here momentarily, which again was the, uh, 343 meters per second. So we've only got about 50 meters per second to go till that happens. We're already, we're already getting the glorious speed effects. And ooh, almost, this thing's getting up pretty quick. Lovely. Look at that beautiful little rocket go. And yeah, there we are. We have broken the sound barrier. Well, at least as it stands in our world. Uh, it'd be nice if we actually did have sound barrier effects in this game. That would be quite cool. And we're getting up pretty quick to our 440 meters per second for the top speed of the original X1 flight. Which, uh, for those of you on the Imperial system, was roughly around 1,000 miles per hour. Uh, good times, good times. So that was 440. We are actually slowing down, though, now, which is a little disappointing. We are still gaining speed, but much, much more slowly. Hmm. Get some shots of this baby. Oh, I do like it. <laughs> Again, doesn't look exactly like the X1, but you know what? It's pretty close, so I, I can't wait until Beal does finish up the wings and things of that variety. That will be quite cool, so it'll look a bit more proper to an X1, and of course this isn't exactly like the X1 because we did take off from a runway and uh, the X1 was dropped from a modified bomb bay of a oh god, B... 52? Oh no, B29. Oh, there it is. Had to go back to the uh, <laughs> the Wikipedia page there. 
Lovely, but yes, yes, B-29 uh, originally dropped it out of its bomb bay, and then it flew on. We, of course, took off. Though, hey, if you are adventurous and a good plane builder, I would love to see one of you guys attempting a flight like that. So one of these on the bottom and have a big plane on top, that'd be quite cool. If you can accomplish that with this, uh, this, uh, oh god, what was the name of this whole mod again? <laughs> <laughs> hey, Ruby, there we go. I would love to see it. Send me a tweet or a Google Plus pick, whatever in the crap you use for social media, because that would be pretty awesome. I do not have the sort of building skills for that, but I'm sure one of you guys does out there, and I would just be very happy to see. So let's see, where are we? Oh my god, we've actually passed our 440 barrier. Beautiful, we're almost out of fuel, though. So, we did as well and better than the original X1. The X1A, though, we're not quite going to get to that speed. Oh, we're getting some juddering. Ooh, we might, actually. 720 is the barrier that we need. Oh, we are kind of crashing towards the Earth now, though. But still, we could make it. 720. Oh, God, pull up. <laughs> I'd rather not crash into the ocean. Uh, yeah, we're not going to make it to the 720. But we did beat the 440 meters per second, though, of the original X1 flight. And there go our engines. We are now <laughs> slowly but surely descending down towards a watery grave. But yes, we traveled quite far, did pretty well on it, and I'm, I'm actually pretty happy. We surpassed the flight of the first X1, so that that makes this mod more than worth it in my opinion. But yes, if you would like to download this for yourself, you can check out the link in the description as always, and I definitely would say to go and give it a try. And also, like I said, if you're a good builder out there, I'd love to see you guys attempt to be able to drop this from something akin to a B-29. That would be pretty cool. And of course, as I said, more parts to come for this pack in the future, including a V2 rocket and other various parts. Uh, but yeah, that is going to be it for this episode today. I hope you all have enjoyed, and of course, that you come back for the next. But until then, thank you for watching, my friends. And as always, have a good one. Now I'm going to kind of watch here as Jebediah slowly but surely descends into a watery grave at about 50 meters per second. Oh, oh god, actually, we never looked at the IVA. Here it is. <laughs> Before we crash and die, here's the, you know, lovely, simplistic IVA. V very beautiful, definitely akin to the original old school parts of the 50s, or 40s and 50s of the X1. I can't believe I almost forgot to take a look at this. Beautiful, beautiful little interior. Jebediah's last, last vision. <laughs> Alright, that's gonna be it, folks. Later!